are into rock and roll. We've got Big Ten play coming up uh, this weekend. We go to Minnesota, leaving tomorrow afternoon for the game on Saturday. We've got Ariel Powers here today as well. We'll chat with Ariel Powers later in the show. Uh, we'll talk a little Big Ten, and we'll talk about uh, the rest of the games. Uh, these last three games, two and one, it's, uh, starting to slowly come together here as uh, as you get through that the non-conference schedule, finishing at eight and five. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the last like four or five games we've put it together, at least defensively, and that spent was kind of our struggles. And, you know, we're getting a little bit better. It was nice to see both work um, against Colgate, you know, really doing our job offensively as well as obviously doing a nice job on the defensive end. But, um, you know, we'll have our hands full uh, on the road in the Big Ten and then on the road against Minnesota. They, they do a nice job for sure, and they've got great players. I think this year what makes it competitive is that it's any, it's really anybody's ball game. It's anybody's championship. Uh, I think Michigan State's in a great position. Things are really starting to come together, very talented, very deep. But uh, this is this is the year where the, the bottom has has sort of risen to the top and there's it's incredibly competitive and I think there's gonna be a lot of surprises come March. 127.9. 45-1. We've always made comments in practice or, you know, when in intense moments, you know, like this isn't going to fly in a Big Ten season or, or, you know, just stuff like that. I have a lot of confidence in our team, especially the younger girls, because they have made so many strides this year already and it's it's been like four months. So we have half of our season left, really. I'm so excited to see what level that they can even take our whole team to. Just listening and, and stuff like that to us, to the older girls, um, I think that we will be able to do something really, really special this year. Big Ten Conference is really talented top to bottom. I mean, there used to be definitely a top tier, a middle tier, and a bottom tier, and right now it's it's a line that's, you know, not easily drawn. And uh, we've had a lot of changes in the coaching ranks. I think there's been a lot of resources put into it. We've got great players, great freshmen, good vets coming back. So it's a league that definitely has been doing this in the national rankings and certainly on a national level. I think they're great universities, great cities, great locations. I mean, I grew up in Chicago and went to Northwestern. Every place is unique. I think this conference has fantastic coaches. Um, there's so many hotbeds of, of great girls basketball talent on the high school level. And um, you know, you mix all that together with the tradition of like a Michigan State overall in sports and uh, Michigan and Ohio State. And you put all that together and you've got one great women's basketball conference. So the journey begins, right? This yeah. is where it starts. This is what you work hard for. This is the time. Like I said, I mean, we have to be mentally and physically tough okay, in the Big Ten, and it starts right here okay, today. You also are have to understand there's going to be some adversity. They might be up, they might be down, whatever. We've got to be able to withstand that and come together as a group. All right, Really work on that and concentrate on what we're doing. Okay, Don't get fragmented. Get stronger together. Okay, as for Every day, every possession, find a way to make it happen. All right, got it. Very even first week of Big Ten action of the three top 25 teams in the conference. Two of them lost on the first night. And the third, Nebraska, just barely edged Northwestern by a point at home. This league very, very wide open this season and a chance for MSU to try to steal one on the road to start the season tonight. Ariel Powers with a basketball to the near side. She tries a three and hits nothing but net. The rebound tipped to the far right corner. It's picked up by Clarissa Bell. Hustling across the half court line to the top of the key. Inside to Pickrell, then back over to Powers. She gets knocked, uh, the ball knocked away. Then she gives it to Mills after she picked it up. And Becca Mills knocks down the three ball. Overhead pass top side for Shea. Lob underneath Sowie. Double teamed and stripped by Clarissa Bell. She picks it up and races across the half court line. To the top of the key, now slows it down. 
Overhead pass to Keanu Johnson. Bounce pass back to Mills. Hand off Johnson. Goes up with the right hand and lays it in. What a beautiful find by Becca Mills. And a timeout called by Minnesota. Keanu Johnson at the top of the key with eight seconds to go. Still with the dribble. Six to shoot. She drives in. Johnson hand off to Mills. Goes up. Banks it off the glass. And the foul. And Mills is heading to the line. Bob inside. Zowie working on Williams, goes up with the right hand, that's no good, she keeps going back to that right hand hook shot, and that times Williams slowed it down. Now out on the break, Powers heads up to the rack and finger rolls it in, and a timeout called by Minnesota. Johnson right around the screen, accelerates right to the lane, hand off to Madison Williams, the free throw line jumper is blocked, Keanu Johnson picks it up, turns around and floats it in as the shot clock expired. Bell with a catch and shoot three. That's good, nothing but net from Clarissa Bell in the near left wing. It's all Spartans today, 75-41. A quick touch pass underneath. Williams makes a catch in traffic, then hooks it up and in. That's a strong move by Madison Williams. And that's the type of confidence that she's starting to build over those last four games. The Spartans will dribble it out, two, one, and there's the horn. MSU wins 81-56. They take their Big Ten opener on the road against Minnesota. The Golden Gophers giving up a season-high 81 points as the Spartans shoot 57% from the field. It was all MSU in the second half. I'm really, really proud of yourselves, all right? And get yourselves ready. we got a tough one coming up against Nebraska. We're going to need everybody, okay? Everybody, all right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great job. So I'll make some comments. Obviously, you know, we're here for a reason. Unfortunately, it's, um, you know, to let you know that Madison Williams is not going to be able to play this season. She suffered a, another ACL injury, and I'll let Doc handle all the, the medical side of that. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is just as a human being, you feel for her. Oh, yeah. Listeners, just to know, I'm sorry to cut you off right there, Keaton, but Madison Williams is at the scorer's table right now, getting ready to check in. So get ready for a great crowd ovation. Inside, Becca Mills is fouled. And so Becca Mills will head to the line. And Madison Williams at the scorer's table should be coming in any moment for the first time since 2011. Finally getting to like take off your warm up and like show your jersey. I know that's like really small, but like. Having my jersey visible and like actually having sweat on it and all that kind of stuff, like walking up to the table and checking in, and I, you know, I was so nervous. Like I said, I like couldn't even hear the crowd barely. But um, when I stood up, I definitely, I mean, I heard the crowd. I didn't look up because I was too terrified to like even look around. I had to just like be focused. Mills lines up the second. It is up and true. And now a whistle at Madison Williams coming out onto the court for the first time since 2011. Three ACL tears finally back for the first time. It was exciting. Like it was just really fun and getting out there I was shaking and I again I could barely look around and I smiled, but I was just like, you know, nervous and everything. But it was just it was amazing to step foot on the floor and to be taped up and braced up and like tied up and everything's ready to go and like, you know, your earrings are out and your hair's up and you're just nervous and you warmed up and everything. It was just, you know, you take it for granted. You really do. You know, for all of us to see her go through that, not too uncommon for, for, for female athletes, especially in basketball and soccer, to have ACL injuries, and certainly unfortunately not too uncommon to, to tear one knee and then the other, but to have it back to back, she's not the first for that to happen to, but certainly devastating. I fully believe that God doesn't make any mistakes, and a lot of times that's a, it's a cop out for people and their mistakes. and. I mean, obviously, that's that can be true. But for me, I really do believe that um, just there's a reason. There's a reason that he chose me. There's a reason that I'm going through it, both for the world and for me. Like, it's something that I'm that's changing me and making me into the person that I am. But in the grand scheme of my life, yes, this is such a big deal, and it's shaping me, and it's changing me. But it's just, you know, it's just life on Earth. You know, it's not end all, be all. So it's kind of just like. After a while, you have to just sit back and enjoy the ride. Making a decision to come back and do this for a third time, sit through a third season, 
on the bench rooting for a team and being a team player without actually getting to show her skills, that's mentally tough. Um, and for her to do this for a third year, the, the deal was she asked me what I thought. I said, it's definitely possible to come back, but you gotta make sure it's in your heart because I can't promise this is not gonna happen again. It's happened three times. And I made her and her parents and coach and everyone, I made a promise that I will be the bad guy. I'm not gonna clear until she's 100%. Well, to me, she's not even redefining, she's defining. She's basically a senior who people have never seen play. She has never seen herself play. So she's in the midst of just trying to figure out what her body can do. She's learned so much. I just think back on watching her on the bench, taking notes, on the bench, getting up and being in every huddle. Um, so she's just sort of on this journey to figure out what her body can, can do and how she can help this team win, win a championship. Michigan State has been so good to me. I <laughs> have done nothing but use the resources and not really give back a whole lot uh, physically. But every step of the way, everyone cares so much about you. Like I know Lou and Dr. Shingles and all my people will be at my wedding, like I'm sure of it. People here just care about you, not just as a player, but as a person. And they care about your struggles and they wanna be there to help. And I think that, um, it just shows you a lot about Michigan State as a whole. Everyone here cares so much about everyone else that is here. It's just such a great place to, to have something like this happen because somewhere else, I can't even imagine. Michigan State has so many great athletes, great traditions. To me, she is the ultimate Spartan because she's, she's coming back from an injury for her and what she wants out of basketball, but she wants to play for Susie Merchant. She wants to wear that jersey that says Michigan State. And so you might have a great linebacker, you might have a great center in basketball, you might have a great point guard, but if you're looking for a great Sparty, look at Madison Williams, she's real special. What she's taught us all, I think, is perseverance, and uh, I've never seen a kid want it so badly, and I think in some ways the way this worked out, she came in with a lot of talent, a McDonald's All-American, and certainly obviously a very talented player, and then uh, and that never wanted to be defined by basketball, probably played it more because of her size and athleticism, and she was just good at it, to having it taken from her and making her realize how much she loves basketball and how passionate she is to get back out there, and that you know, working through some of the adversity will be worth it in the end. I think she's certainly taught us all. She's been an inspiration to us and she's done it with her head high, a smile on her face, and certainly someone that, you know, has really given a lot to her teammates and invested in this program. Just watching her, her perseverance is so inspiring to me because honestly, if I was in her shoes the first two or three years, I have no idea if I would have been able to push a fourth year, you know, and so I've just been in awe. Like sometimes when she's playing, it's like, I can't believe this. She's actually playing with us. So it's it's been really great. I'm someone who needs my alone time. Like I need my, my rest time. Like I need my music. I need my, you know, my books, all that kind of stuff. But um, I just enjoy people. I enjoy, I don't know. I like when it's like the more people, the better, you know, like the more people you can include, the more hang out time you can have like you don't have to be doing anything but I just really enjoy people I love that and then my family is just a huge huge part of my life um, I'm home a ton talk to my parents every day and my brother and sister almost every day so um, that's another big part of me too She's outgoing, she's dynamic, She's really has a lot of great leadership traits. And the other thing is, is that academics is very important to Madison. You know, she's someone that really invests in that side and, uh, you know, it's kind of unique to see someone that's so talented on the court also really care sometimes about the other side of her life, which is academics. And, um, you know, she's just exactly what you'd want your daughter to be when they grow up. The one thing that's special about Madison is that a, she's fought through this and she's maintained her all her goals, and, and B, that she'll be successful in whatever she does. I think for me personally, it's going to take some time for me. Um, now that I am playing and I am getting more confident, um, I'm kind of forgetting about the whole goal of just staying healthy for the entire year. That's the goal. I was encouraged not to make sports-specific goals for this season necessarily, because the main goal is to just be healthy for an entire year. Um, so for me, it might be a little bit different, but um, this team has just such, such a good, just something, like there's just something different about this team and we have a great opportunity, we just gotta do, we gotta go get it. 
Ariel Powers with the basketball for MSU. Gives it to Mills. She spins right from the right block and puts it in. That was a great athletic move from Becca Mills. Over the last three games, she is 9 of 9 from the field. Kiana Johnson with the basketball. She goes left around a Williams screen, drives to the rack and lays it home. That was all set up by the big screen for Madison Williams. Kiana Johnson on the left wing for the MSU with the basketball. Gets it down to the left block, Hines spins right, goes up, bakes it off the glass, and the foul. Hines heading to the line. Kiana screen guarded by Jan Costco, and she's blocked from behind by Tori Jan Costco. MSU the other way, Bell pushing in transition. In the lane, hand off pick roll, bakes it in, and the foul. Over dribble, six to shoot to the right wing, five to go. And Tosca steps back for a deep three. That's no good. Powers quickly tipped it's it back in. up, it's and in. it's good. Count the bucket. What an athletic play from Ariel Powers. Get the fans involved too. They're on baseline. 18 and a half to go in the game. A lob inside to Hooper. Knocked away by Powers. Picked up by Pickle. Passed up ahead to Bell. Underneath, lays it in with a left hand. Beautiful ball movement. The steal by Powers. Pickrell to Johnson to Bell, and the Spartans have a 13-point lead. Jan Costa with the Pickrell off the screen, steps back for a three, and got it. Annalise Pickrell lets out a screen. She's hit her last two three-point field goal attempts. Accelerates from the last wing, kicks out to the left corner, Bell. Five to shoot, Bell drives in, in the middle lane, out to Jan Costa. Her three is good. Nothing but net with one second left on the shot clock. Beautiful ball movement. In a shot forced up, no good. Becca Mills has the rebound, and the Spartans can dribble it out. The shot clock is off with 17 seconds to go. Next game for MSU, they head out to Ann Arbor to take on the Michigan Wolverines, and everybody at the Breslin Center comes to their feet now to cheer the Spartan victory. I see it as being as difficult as they come. You know, I've never been a coach that looks at my schedule and goes, okay, that's a win, that's a win, that's a win, that's a loss, that's, you know, I don't do that. I think with our conference, you know, it is about the next game and the next possession. And, uh, you know, I look forward to the challenge and the rigors of the Big Ten. No good, Ariel Powers was there with the defense, and MSU races the other way. Pick roll the bell, wide open, banks it up and in off the glass. MSU up four nothing for the first 40 seconds. The ball rotated around to the left wing. Pickrell catch and shoot three. That's good. Nothing but net from Annalise Pickrell on the near left side. For Johnson to the front court for MSU. Eight minutes gone in the first half. Spartans up 11 to seven. Skip pass to Bell on the right wing. Lob down to Williams. She spins around, puts it up and in. Spartan freshman dribbles to the right wing. Kicks it over the left wing. Wide open three from Powers. That's in. Ariel Powers has been red hot from the three point line. Pickle into the lane, Hines triple team, spins right, goes up off the glass and in. And now MSU comes the other way. Johnson to AG, baseline jumper, that's good. It's a rebound, and the Spartans get a fresh shot clock. Skip pass to Johnson, over to Powers, drives the left baseline, and banks it in easy. Becca Mills has the rebound, outlet pass to Bell, two on one, Bell to Pickle, the bounce pass, banks it up and in, it's good. Pick it up off the hardwood. Skip pass to Johnson, far left wing, three, bam! Kiana Johnson responds with a three and gives the Spartans a three-point lead. A lob inside, Corey has it taken away by Kiana Johnson. She races across the half-court line, in the lane, head off the bell, goes up off the glass and in. Spartans win on the road in their only meeting against Michigan this year, 79-72.